bent, but it's going to stay bent as I move through, all right? I'm not going to increase the angle of flexion of that knee as I move through. If you can, you can also keep it straight. Either is fine, but if you start to flex that knee, it's got to stay in that locked position, that locked flex position. It's not going to shift and decrease the angle there. Make sense? We'll always imagine, even if we do the low windmill, that one arm's overhead. So, one arm's going to be overhead for your windmill. You're going to shift 80% of your body weight into the same side leg. So if my right arm's overhead, it's going to be straight and vertical. My right leg is going to be vertical and perpendicular to the ground also. So it's almost like your hips kicked out where a mom would be carrying their toddler on their, on their hip. All right? So we're going to keep our eyes overhead once again. This leg never bends. The knee is always extended. Your left leg, or the opposite leg, can have a small bend in it, or if you have good flexibility, your leg can stay straight, just as long as you don't change it once you start the exercise, all right? So, we're evenly distributed. We're gonna kick weight out into our right side hip, keep our eyes up on the imaginary kettlebell, take your left hand and just guide it down the inseam of your left leg, as low as your flexibility allows you to. So, from here, you should create a right angle with your hip, your leg, and your back. All right? Then you're going to activate your glutes or fire with your glutes to come back up to standing all the way at the top. And then you can redistribute your weight into both feet. All right? So the leg is vertical, just like the wall. And as I fold, I have to keep 80% of my body weight into that leg so that my hip stays in contact with the wall the entire time. If I drift away, I'm shifting my weight into the wrong leg. So your hip or your butt stays in contact with the wall as you go through the exercise. Whichever you prefer. And you're going to set yourself up. Now is where it's important that you keep your eyes up on the kettlebell the entire time. You're going to shift your weight in that same side leg. Still fold down. Some people are going to get stuck here just because of flexibility. But if you can, you can go all the way to the ground. And then come back up. So this arm has to stay vertical and perpendicular the entire time. That's the first. All right? High windmill and have your form down. You can put them together. So you're going to do a double windmill. So now we're increasing our weight. So we have a little bit more going on in your core. But we've shortened the range of motion because you're only going to go as low as the height of the kettlebell handle. So you get, you give away your range of motion a little bit, but you increase your weight. So, if you don't have the same size kettlebell, that's fine. You can put your heavier one on the bottom to start, or you can put your lighter one on the bottom if you're used to it. I'm used to it, so I'm going to put the lighter one on the bottom. So, you can clean and push press, snatch, but you set this up. So, like I've been saying, you don't want to look down at this point. I know where the ground is, but I want to make sure I know where the weight is overhead, especially this amount of weight, all right? So, I can feel the kettlebells in the arch of that foot. Now I'm going to redistribute my weight, 80% is in this leg. I'm going to fold at my hips, feel around for the handle, and then stand up. Yes. All right, so your movement pattern doesn't change. It's the loading pattern again that changes. Okay. Away in the opposite direction from the arm that's overhead. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you go this way with your, both your feet pointed out, so your hips externally rotated, you're never going to be able to get more, to, to, to fold the right way. So, we're either going to go straight forward with this foot or internally rotate so that you can fold. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck and you're not going to be able to go all the way down. Alright? And then, like I said to you, with the width of your stance, it's more narrow. The wider you are is not going to help you out because then you can't get this leg vertical to the ground. Alright? So it's a more narrow stance. We're going to go with both feet just for ease of remembering. Both feet are pointed in the opposite direction from the hand that's overhead. And you're here. 